it's Taylor Proud here, and we are back on the tutorial world. It's been a minute, uh, over a year actually, since I posted the part two of my uh, wave system tutorial. And I've been doing a lot of this uh, wave tutorial stuff. I realize that I'm just trying to make this system is pretty much the standard in, uh, or at least it should be the standard in any sort of map creation. Um, it's just so versatile and I just really want to get this design out there. And that's why I'm kind of trying to part out the video, each individual part of the design here. Alright, so with all that being said, I am back. And uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure you guys hit that subscribe, subscribe button in the... <laughs> you know where it is. You know where it is, guys. Alright, so let's get into it. So basically, this is your uh, command tower. I covered it in the last video uh, in this playlist. I'm going to go ahead and put all these in the playlist. Uh, it was over a year ago, but this is part three for it. Alright, so basically, instead of the uh, ignition system, I just went ahead and replaced it with this uh, because there's no need to, you know, have a zombie that spawns just to show you guys this. So, uh, Block Sand Falls comes here, goes in, says wave one, makes some lightning sounds, and then this is Cobblestone is spawn room, and I went ahead and set up some uh, just example rooms over here. Uh, obviously, you're map probably isn't going to look like that, but it's just an example. So we'll go ahead and start. Alright, so as you can see, and here, it spawned three zombies, and that is because of this right here, surrounded by torches. This is your spawn grid. Alright, so we have ignition, command tower, spawn grid. So these just display the wave number uh, noise, which is completely optional, you don't have to do that. But then these right here are where the magic happens over on the spawn grid. So this first one is going to set block, and then you put the uh, whatever coordinates, redstone torch, not the beam. So, that is this block right here. So it's going to set the uh, set the torch there, which is going to power this and go through all three of these. And I'll come back to that in just a second. But this one is the exact same command, except for instead of redstone torch, you put air. So that will place and then delete the, the redstone torch. That way it doesn't stay on permanently. So, all right, getting back to this. So this first one, just your standard run of the mill. Um, you don't have to change anything. It's just the default. Um, but if you do happen to change it, impulse, unconditional, needs redstone, uh, summon zombie, and then put coordinates for where you want to spawn it in the room. Uh, it can be behind a barrier. You know, like I said, it's completely customizable. You could put a zombie in each corner of the room. Um, this is where things kind of change. So here, I just did the same coordinates just because it, you know, I'm making a YouTube video and I don't really want to go into that depth. So block type, you want chain, conditional, always active. Now what that's going to do is it's going to make sure this goes off. If this doesn't go off, then it won't continue down the chain. So it has to be able to get this, uh, the redstone, and then this will turn on and then it says, okay, I can turn on now. And then this one is the exact same way, chain, conditional, always active. And with this, you can make this go out and you don't need to use uh, repeaters in between each block. And the reason that we don't do that over here, like with these, the reason we don't put 
or the reason that we do put a repeater in between is because it does just need that single tick delay in order for the redstone to actually power this otherwise it would just be placed and deleted so quick that the game could not pick up the signal going in so i didn't wire any of the rest of these in and you can obviously expand these like for instance diamond room over here it's a quite a bit bigger so you probably want more than just your three zombies to spawn not a problem just go ahead and extend this out pretty much as far as you want it however many zombies you want to spawn and it's uh, really that simple that is the complete spawn grid like I said in the last video uh, the command tower it makes a lot more sense um, once you learn what the spawn grid does the command tower just says hey Here's the wave number, here's the noise, send the, send the zombies is essentially what this is doing. And this is saying, oh, yep, we gotta send zombies, and it spawns them on the map. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit subscribe. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and wrap this one up, because there's not really anything else to show you about the uh, spawn grid. That's everything about the spawn grid it's really simple but in the grand scheme of things it just brings everything together uh, there is one more part to it uh, that's really the icing on the cake and that is uh, basically the logic gate that tells which doors have been bought and we'll get into that in the next video but uh, essentially this sends a redstone signal to the spawn room because this block's already filled in. The next one is going to be able to tell uh, the command tower to fill these in for whichever room is open. So that's just kind of a sneak peek for what's going on next, guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.